All right, perfect. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hey, how's everybody doing? Let us know where you're watching from. Say hi. We didn't realize that you guys couldn't see the chat yesterday. Sorry about that. You guys can see the chat now. Say hi. Where are you coming? Where are you watching from? I see Calgary. I see, uh, I saw somewhere else. Alberta. Oh my goodness. Grand Prairie, Alberta. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Oh, awesome. We have someone from Finland. Yay. Welcome, Pia. <laughs> Yes, thanks for joining us yesterday as well. Yes, we are so excited that you're here. We are, thank you guys for coming back. And for those of you who weren't here yesterday, welcome. Welcome to day two of the Courage to Lead show, Courage to Lead Unlocked. We are unlocking the secrets to having your best life ever, having great relationships, a great career, a great family life, how to get it all, have it all, keep it all, <laughs> make it all work. It can happen. You don't have to let go of one side of your life, love, whatever, anything. You don't have to let it all go or you don't have to just focus on one. You can do it all. And that's what our, our experts are here to share with you. They're also here to share their stories of triumph, their stories of courage, and what it has taken them to have the success that they have had. So if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. We will ask them live. Uh, pop them in the chat for us as well. If you have any questions for us, if there's anything that we're not covering or that you'd like to know, or maybe you're really curious about something, you want to go a little, a little bit deeper on something, let us know. Say hi. You know, we're here to support you. We're here to share some beautiful knowledge and information. And uh, any way that we can serve you, we're happy to do so because this event is for you. We are not here to show our faces just to have a chat together, but this, <laughs> we want to provide as much value as we can. Uh, we have a long day coming. So um, a lot of speakers, amazing. Like Melissa was sharing, like, oh my God, just <sighs> thinking of yesterday, like what a day and today we get to go even deeper uh different areas and we all share like me and melissa and our experts who are joining us we share the same principle to have it all it's life is not either or game but we want to show you how you can have that flourishing relationship with yourself your your loved ones the people you care about deepen those relationships while building your business, growing your leadership skills and, and really having a flourishing career, uh, whether you're an entrepreneur or, uh, or a leader in, in other, other companies. And, and we have, just looking at the program, we have so many areas covered today. So uh, we want to hear from you. Where are you at? Like, what is what is the maybe the priority one for you where are you focusing on is it is it self-love self-care is it is it relationship with yourself or is it relationship with your family for example or are you uh, wanting to grow your business leadership where where are you so please, please share in the chat so we know where you're coming from. And this is also for you, because like I said, uh, we have a lot coming today. So when you know where you want to focus on, you'll hear the talks in a different way from through those lenses. So absolutely, absolutely. I love that. Yes. Let us know what your thoughts are or, you know, if there's something that, you know, it Maybe you're curious about something else and it doesn't even have to do with any of this. Maybe it's something that you're just really curious and you think we can cover, let us know. We'd be happy to, it all, it all seems to be connected. You know, if we're missing something in one area, it might be because of something else. And that might be something that you might want to go a little deeper into. Um, and we're happy to help you with that as well. So um, with that, I think, I think I just, I heard another notification somewhere. Let me just kind of turn off all my notifications here. 
I think I think it's time for me to interview you. I think oh, that was the notification. That's probably <laughs> what it was. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Um, let me just see. Okay, I should have my mic. Hopefully, you all can hear me. So, for those of you who were yesterday, and I I shared a little bit about myself. So now I have the privilege to uh, here to introduce my co-host Melissa, dear friend, other coach, and uh, let me do a little short introduction to start this day and to share more about Melissa. And let's get this uh, party started. Yes. So Melissa Rosales is the founder of Sunshine Coaching, a time management and empowerment coach to mothers who are uh, striving to truly having it all. Melissa is a wife and a mother of four amazing individuals. Melissa is an epitome to busy mom as she has juggled entrepreneurship, community service alongside running her household and being international about intentional about connecting with her family. When she reached a point of burnout, she knew there had to be a better way of life than, uh, than being a martyr and a victim to her circumstances. She buckled down and started looking at her life with the same care and dedication she did in her businesses and jobs. This uh, brought ease and flow to her life and now is dedicated to help other moms create the same results in their lives. So Melissa, welcome Hi. to our show and day two. Day two, <laughs> yes, so excited to be here. Yes, can you tell us a little bit more what courage means to you and how it has shown up in your life previously and how does it show up now as well? Yeah, absolutely. Well, courage is something, you know, it's so interesting when you and I started talking about courage, it's uh, it's something that I thought about as well, when I was going through it, right, when I was in the middle of it, when I was in the weeds of just figuring out how to raise a family at a very young age, how to be a wife, how to care for your own home and, and things, because Ulysses and I started really early. Um, just to give you an idea, I had my first baby at 19. And though that wasn't in my personal plan, that's how it worked out. You know, Ulysses and I were dating since high school and we were uh, planning on having a family eventually. It just happened a lot sooner than what we thought it would be. And uh, for a long time, I used to beat myself up over that. I used to say, oh my goodness, you know, I messed up. I didn't, I didn't finish college. I don't even have my first house. Who am I to think that I can raise a family? And uh, at one point, you know, I, I was sitting there with those ideas, right? When I was thinking, when I found out I was going to have my first baby and I was thinking, oh my goodness, like, what am I going to do? Like, I know I'm not mature enough to have a baby. I know I'm not mature enough to know how to do all of these things, how to adult, how to life, right? <laughs> how, to, how to run a life. And um, there were a lot of things that I wanted to do. I had a lot of aspirations and, um, you know, unrealized dreams yet. And so when I finally turned it around, you know, because I looked at Ulysses, Ulysses was super excited, obviously. He was like, yes, we're starting our family. I was like, no, I'm not ready. And um, he looked at me and he was like, okay, talk to me. What, what's going on? And I said, I know I'm not going to be a good mother. And he looked at me and he goes, well, first of all, just the fact that you care and the fact that you are wanting to be a good mother is going to make you a good mother because now you're being intentional. And when he said that, I was like, okay, I can do this. That was literally like, it was one day of crying, feeling sorry for myself and saying, oh, this is not going to work to, okay you're right, we can figure this out. People figure it out all the time. And at the time, I didn't think that was courageous. I literally was thinking, okay, um, oh, what the fuck, go for it anyway, right? <laughs> literally, it was just <laughs> go, 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 go. And then I, I kind of switched my mindset into, okay, 
I have things that I want to do and I have things that I get to do, right? I get to have a family. I get to um, figure this out. And basically I knew that I was going to grow up with my kids because I knew I wasn't, I wasn't ready. You know, I wasn't ready. I wasn't a mature person. I wasn't an adult, what I considered an adult. And um, I thought, okay, you know what? Let's have all our kids now. Let's just, let's just do it. Because once my kids are older and they start having their own lives, Ulysses and I can have our own lives and we can do all of the things that we want to do. And by then it'll be different. We can take our kids with us, you know? And that was basically the plan um, from then on. And again, I didn't think that was courageous in any way. To me, it was just, okay, uh, this is happening and we're doing it now and we're going for it. But super intentional, you know, um, Ulysses was a big gamer. Like he loved playing video games. And I was like, listen, if we're going to have kids, I'm not going to be here walking around with babies while you're sitting in front of the TV. Either you find a way to incorporate the kids in here or we get rid of the video games, you know, one or the other. We had to compromise. We had to figure out ways to do that. And so um, what courage means to me, really, that was a long way to say what courage means to me is you don't know what's on the other side of it, but you just go, you just do it. And we, oh, we do have, I love how yesterday CB was talking about micro courage because they are those little everyday things that we do. And we don't give ourselves credit for them ever. Like we're like, no, that's just, that's just something. Wouldn't everybody do this? You know? Yeah. I, I don't feel good today, but I'm going to do something because it impacts someone else. Someone else needs me at this moment. And I did, I will say, I took that mm. side to the extreme <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Anybody calls me and I was like, sure, I'll squeeze it into my schedule somewhere. But I did get to the point where, you know, I did go extreme and I had to kind of hone it in. So it is a lot about, um, you know, discerning and figuring out, okay, what's going to work best for me? What, where do I draw the lines, right? Where do I actually say, okay, this is important to me and you know this doesn't quite align with me so now i get to make choices and those choices are also courageous it's it's also something to say no to people that was hard that was hard for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. um and so sometimes you do get to say no and sometimes it's good for you and your family or your goals or your, whatever your, your career whatever it is that you're working on sometimes that has to come in right so I hear I, so many things. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> and I, no, I, I just really want to say like how you uh, gave examples of micro courage, like for those of you who didn't hear the, the talks yesterday and what we talked about acknowledging those moments. And I love what you shared, like you stood up, uh, you went against those fears whatever you had like I'm not ready like this wasn't in my plans like we can't always control everything but we can control our response to things and how you were like okay we'll figure it out and I love that you had the support by your side yeah. uh, to do that but you also were aware of your boundaries and and what kind of support you need like okay it doesn't mean playing video games. We are having a baby. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so the courage to speak up as well. But yeah, let's go deeper into that, what you said. Okay, having the kids and career and, and businesses and saying yes, but learning how to say no to things. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah. How does that courage show there yeah. uh, in your life? How you're just like planning and managing it all? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, coming from a Hispanic background, there are certain, you know, expectations. And I think that was really the thing that really hit me hard, you know, because like I said, I had plans. I was a dancer. I wanted to be an architect and I was getting ready to go to school, you know, for all of that. And um, I hadn't even graduated high school. I was, you know, my senior year, I actually dropped out and I went back to school because uh, that was something that was super important to me where, uh, you know, I, I, there was, there's nothing wrong with getting a GED, but for me, I didn't want to get a GED. Like I, I didn't want to take the shortcut. I wanted to complete what I had started to me. I was like, 
I spent how many years in school and I'm going to take a shortcut and not even get my diploma in my brain that just wasn't acceptable to me. And so I was like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm going to go back. I don't care how many times it takes. I don't care how long it takes me. I know I'm having a baby and I'm tired and I can't go to school and, you know, have, you know, grow a child inside my body right now. But I don't care. I'll go back. And I had to put my pride aside because even that's difficult. I wasn't graduating with my uh, high school class. All of my friends, they knew, you know, and I was embarrassed and, you know, it was life, but I, it was something that was, you know, those were, there were strong feelings there. And um, I had to just say, you know what, who cares that I don't even see my high school friends anymore. I have to do what I have to do. And I wanted to make sure that, I, that my kids knew that if something hard came, that they could do it. You know, if mom can do it, you can do it. And I didn't feel like I was a strong person, like at all, at all. So I was like, if I can prove this to them, then when something gets difficult for them, I can come back and say, you know what? I did it. I went back, I put my pride aside and I got it done. Sorry, I'm getting emotional here. Um, it was so important. It was so important to me because I wanted to raise strong kids, stronger than I felt I was. I wanted to be a stronger person and I didn't know how, but I knew that somehow I would, I would figure that out for my kids. I would figure it out and I would allow them to be those, the strong person that I never was. And so, um, so in doing so, I did, I went back, I finished high school and it took me two extra tries. I had two babies by the time I graduated high school and then I was going to college. So I went to college after that um, to be an architect and I got into, I couldn't get into the architecture industry but I got into the civil engineering industry and you know, I just, in the middle of all of that, I started businesses and I, you know, I started in network marketing, then I was a financial planner. And then I was just, <laughs> I was doing things because um, I had so many aspirations. I still had so many aspirations and my brain was like going, like I needed something, I needed something, I needed something. And so I didn't give up, you know, I just, I kept going. And I, at times it would feel like I would give up. And at times I would just get burned out, you know, from all of the things that I was doing and I was taking things on and then people would start saying, oh, well, this is busy, but I think she can handle it. And when they would say that, I would almost put my worth in there. Like I would almost say, oh yeah, I, I need to, because now they said it, they see it. So there must be something in me that I can handle. I may not be aware, but I'm not going to find out until I know, until I try. And so someone would give me something extra and I would do it and I would get it done. And people would be like, oh, Melissa, you're so amazing. And then I started finding my self-worth in that. Instead of finding my self-worth in the things that I wanted, it was all external. And so that's where I started becoming more of a people pleaser, you know? And I, I felt like I can't say no. I can't say no because people might not like me. People might be upset. I might let them down. If I don't do it, I don't know who's going to do it. Like I just started telling myself all of these things and all of that was just building up for me to burn out. It was just building up and building mm -hmm. up and building up. And I thought, okay, like I could feel it. I wasn't me anymore. I wasn't smiling anymore. I wasn't, I didn't feel happy. I was just like going through motions. And I would notice it when, um, when I would be around my kids and, you know, something, something silly would happen and I would have a meltdown. And I, it, it was almost like me looking at myself from the outside and saying, what are you doing, Melissa? Like, that is not a reason to be reacting in this way. And now your baby's hurt. And that's mm. when I had to take a step back and say, okay, something's got to change. This isn't working. This but it was amazing that you noticed that. Yeah. Because that's where the change happened that you actually noticed that, okay, like 
this is not aligned with how I want to be and show up mm -hmm. to others and especially for yourself. Yes. So that takes courage to admit that and notice that. Yeah, it's that so was... easy to, you know, walk oh, yeah. blind. And... That was hard. That was hard. Don't tell, don't get me wrong. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't even tell Ulysses. You know, I was just like, whoa, that's not cool. That's not who I want to be. That's not who I want to be to anybody. I think I may have reacted with someone else too. I can't quite remember. I probably blocked that out. I'll block that out somewhere. But um, but I knew that's not the kind of person I wanted to be. That's never that was never something that was like a part of me or my heart. You know, mm -hmm. some people are okay with with setting their boundaries, but to me, setting boundaries seemed so harsh because I didn't really know the meaning of that, you know. I didn't really know what it meant to set a boundary um, when someone would, you know, when I would try to set a boundary when I was younger, people would say, oh, you're so selfish. Oh, you know, what, what are you doing? Oh, like you're more important than anybody. And it took me a really long time to be okay with putting on that mask first. Like when you're in the airplane and the pressure changes and you, they say, put that mask on first. That was the hardest thing for me. And if I had ever been in an airplane, I wouldn't have listened to the pilot. I would have thrown the mask on everybody else. And then, okay, you guys good? Then I would try to throw it on myself because that's the kind of person that and I- And who does it serve? Right, right. And if I would yeah. have gone down, well, my kids would have had to fend for themselves, you know, or whatever, because- um, because yeah, it didn't, it didn't serve, it didn't serve me. And if it didn't serve me, then I couldn't take care of the things that I needed to take care of or that I wanted to take care of. And, um, me not taking care of me was changing the kind of person that I was. It was changing the kind of person that I was showing up as it was changing, um, everything. I mean, it literally affected not just my family life. It affected the way I ran business. Uh, people stopped buying from me people would kind of like see me coming a mile away. And I think they would see someone that was hurt or jaded. Like, and it was, mm -hmm. it was interesting because I could feel the energy shift. Like I would come and people were like, whoa, I don't know what's going on over mm -hmm. here. But I don't want any of that. And when I noticed that, I was like, oof, okay. Something, you know, now I have to change something else. Now there's something, you know, I had all these signs and I really, because I, you know, I could fix things temporarily, you know, I don't know if anyone's mm -hmm. been there before where you can fix something for a moment, you can make a, a little tweak, a little adjustment, you know, here and there, but nothing was working for like sustainably, you know what I mean? Like I, mm -hmm. I would still have these little bursts and I was getting frustrated and I didn't really know what to do. And so I started seeking help. I started going to people who I knew were successful, who seemed to have it together. And what I learned was that, you know, you, when you're putting in the work, when you're doing the work, you have to do the inner work. You have to, that's the only way you can do things. Like uh, when I started meditating, I started pushing my feelings down. And that was my part of my, my quick fix, you know, instead mm. of actually dealing with the problem, I would just suppress and I would suppress and I would suppress and I would, I wouldn't actually let it go. I wouldn't release anything. And so every once in a while I would get triggered, you know, I, and something would happen and oh, I'd come right back to it because I never actually let go of any of those feelings. And so that was where where it really, you know, where I really started seeing, okay, there, I need to do even, even deeper work now at this point in my life. And so that was kind of, that was my, my turning point. Thanks for sharing and, and being so, so open about this. And I think we, we need to hear more of these stories because I mean, I can relate definitely if I've, and, and a perfect example, how, it's not career, like professional life and personal life, but how your kids were affected, you burning out and saying yes to, to everyone at work and like, yes, I can do it. And so saying yes, yes, yes. And getting that validation for yourself, like from outside 
and that would then affect the people around you like you were sharing about the energy and people were just like okay I'll keep my distance <laughs> I know that like yeah. I'm like like my husband can totally see from my face <laughs> that when something is not correct I can't hide it oh, <laughs> none thanks. of us can <laughs> no. so like you said suppressing uh feelings that's very dangerous because then we are also suppressing the positive ones yeah. if we are just like numbing all the emotions and then you said like okay you can just flash it out and a quick fix is okay it can work for a while and I think today's world we are, we just want the quick fixes yeah like who has the time to do that inner work like you said right. and uh let's uh before we we wrap up uh can you tell more about like how do you feel now about the boundary setting mm -hmm. and saying yes or no what what helps you to choose knowing yourself and your boundaries more like where to draw those lines how to manage I mean you you have for for kids and and be, building a business <laughs> and everything so and a husband too you know yeah. <laughs> so how do you how do you harmonize all this yes yeah, so that's a great question actually um it really started with getting a clear vision. I know everyone says that, just hear me out for a second, okay? I actually, I used to have a great imagination and I used to be able to visualize things, but I, it was really difficult for me. And this is why I took on meditation. It was really difficult for me to step into the future that I wanted, right? That is creating a vision. If someone, you know, if, if you needed clarity on that, I needed clarity for years. I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? I see it, but I didn't see myself in it. And what's funny about that is I could watch a movie. I'll be five minutes into the movie and I am picturing myself as that person. And it was easier for me to be external rather than internal. And so when I finally learned how to have a vision for myself, but like a clear vision, like, okay, what kind of person do I wanna be? Okay, great, got that down, right? Who do I wanna show up for? Or who do I wanna show up as, right? And not just, it's not like, um, this is what this is what I think is, is lost when people say your authentic self. An authentic self is not perfect. An authentic self is not completely imperfect. An authentic self has areas where they're super, super strong and areas where they, you know, they it's I, I don't even want to use the word lack because it's not even lack. Maybe they're just not as strong in certain areas. Um, then they could be, but those areas may not be important. And re recognizing what areas are important to you and what areas are not, and embracing that. Like embracing your full self as you are and being happy with that. Now, if there are areas that you want to focus on and grow, then that's how you focus on it. That's how you know that you're going in the right direction because that's important to you. You know, I, I bought a guitar 15 years ago and I never touched it. I bought it because I wanted to learn it. Never touched it. Didn't let my kids touch it because it was an electric guitar and I didn't know how electric guitars worked and I was freaking out and I was like, don't break it. I don't know how it works yet. You know, and if I, if I would have been confident in it, I would have probably been fine if they broke a string because then I would have known how to replace a string, right? Or whatever. Well, luckily my children all have amazing musical abilities. And my oldest came, I remember he was so sweet. And he was like, mama, can I practice your guitar? He was playing viola at school. And he said, can I show, oh no, no he didn't say that. He said, can I show you something? And I said, sure, what do you wanna show me? And he learned to play a song and he transferred it from the viola to the guitar. And that was the beginning of his music career. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. <laughs> I was like, okay, fantastic. Yes, you may use my guitar. And we went, we got an amp for it. And they're amazing musicians, all my kids. I bought that because I wanted to learn guitar, but it's not important enough for me to learn it. You know what my son did? He gave me, because they own a ton of musical instruments now, he gave me one of his acoustic guitars and it's sitting there. 
I haven't touched it. It's not important <laughs> for me for some reason. I want it's something that I want, but I have to be okay with it. You know, I have I have yeah. other wants as well. I actually I'm kind of sad about that because he knew. And um, so funny, knowing all of that and being okay. And then when stuff like this happens, working through it, you know, working through it. But um, setting those boundaries are so healthy because you're able to do the things that do matter. So like very recently I, I had um, someone call me and I just couldn't do something. And uh, she, you know, she really needed help with something. And normally I would move all my schedule around. I would make arrangements. I'd even, you know, like probably pay a babysitter if I needed to, you know, at the last minute. And when she called me the other day or she texted me the other day, she was like, I really need help with that. I just couldn't, I was like, you know what, honey, I'm sorry. You know, I love you, but I just, th this week doesn't work for me. And she was like, I understand. Thank you. You know, I know that, you know, I know your heart and I know that you're not, you know, you wouldn't be mean or anything, but I appreciate it. And she asked, so she had the courage to ask knowing that I have a busy schedule, which is also important, but I also had the courage to say, I just can't, but I was okay with it. I didn't beat myself up over it. I didn't feel guilty like I would have before all of this, you know, before doing all of this work. And I felt like, okay, that that's what it feels like. That that's exactly it. You know, you're just you're just letting people know what what's important to you because it's just it's just as important, you know. And there are people already out there that that are born with this or they just they've had it from when they were young and I used to be envious of those people but I used to I didn't know I was envious of them I would say things like oh wow they are so selfish you know and that was just from my conditioning you know from the things that I learned when I was younger because I, I labeled it and it was just a different understanding and so not knowing that and um, being okay with that that's where the boundary comes in. And that's where, you know, you, you get a healthier, uh, you get a healthier relationship with yourself. You get a healthier relationship with the people around you. You get a healthier relationship with the kind of person that you want to be in future and the kind of person that you are now. You're still honoring yourself. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's just about reframing. Beautiful journey. Yes. Uh, please put in the chat what you're hearing. And uh, I really hear that when you know yourself, like you were describing that, you know, we all have our strength areas of strength and then some areas that we are, you know, not as strong. But I love what you said, that maybe that's not the priority for you. Mm -hmm. And we, I think we are too much focused on like what we lack of or, or, or those like areas of development, whereas we could just focus on strengths and strengthening the strengths because mm -hmm. we don't, we don't all need to be the same, but how <laughs> you can really flourish in those areas where you are strong. So I, I really loved hearing that and <laughs> that you you sharing that distinction because uh, <laughs> it's so easy to focus on like, like you said, seeing from other people that, oh, like I'm so envious of that quality or what they are good at, but maybe that's not the priority for you right. and knowing that. Right. Yeah, um, absolutely. Just, just so good. You know, figuring that out. And you, it really is self-reflection. You have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. You really have to come from a place of, okay, uh, what is my intention with me? And, you know, taking it from there, what do you want to do? Um, how do you want to, how do you want to show up? So thank you for that, Kaisa. Yeah.